Now, recall that the equations that we've been most interested in so far are what we call linear equations. A linear equation is one where there are no powers of variables, there are no variables in denominators, there are no variable expressions multiplied together, and there are no variables in exponents. In a linear equation, all that we can do with variables is add them together and multiply them by numbers. How can we tell by looking whether or not a table corresponds to a linear equation? Well, there's, there's a hint that we can get having to do with the forms in which we can write linear equations. If we have a linear equation in two variables, say x and y, we can write the equation in the form y equals a number times x plus another number. All we have to do in order to do that is to solve for y. Okay, why does this help us? Well, let me give you an example of an equation that's in that form. Let's say that we have y equals 2 thirds x minus 3. Let's make a table for that equation. x, y, And I'm going to be a little bit clever about this. I'm going to put this into my calculator. y equals 2 thirds x minus 3. Looking at the table now. I'm going to put that into my calculator. And I'm only going to choose to write down x's for which the y is a whole number. So I'm going to take x is negative 6, y is negative 7. x is negative 3, y is negative 5. x is 0, y is negative 3. x is 3, y is negative 1. x is 6 y is 1, let's fill in one more. x is 9, y is 2. Well, check this out. Look what happens between every pair of rows in this table. x goes up by 3, y goes up by 2. x goes up by 3, y goes up by 2. Okay. That, that makes a certain amount of sense. I think what we're seeing here is a constant change in x will produce a constant change in y. In other words, the change in y is proportional to the change in x. And even better than that, we can see the ratio in the equation. Notice the change in x is 3. The change in y is 2. The number m in the equation is the ratio of the change in y to the change in x. What about the number b? Well, we see that in the table, too. The number b in the equation is the value of y when x is 0. Now, there's a slightly different way of understanding the number m as well. Let's look at a version of this table where we actually fill in all the numbers. Just for the sake of demonstration, 
I'm going to pick some values of x where y is positive. Right, so when x is 6, I have y is 1. When x is 7, I have y is, it looks like it's 1.6 repeating. Right, that's 1 and 2 thirds. When x is 8, it looks like I have 2 and 1 third. When x is 9, I have 3. Notice what's going on here now. In each row, I'm just adding 1 to x. What do I have to add to 1 to get 1 and 2 thirds? Well, 2 thirds. What do I have to add to 1 and 2 thirds to get 2 and 1 third? Well, I add 1 third and that brings me up to 2. Another third and I have 2 and a third. And then if I add another 2 thirds to that, it brings me up to 3. If we decide that we want each value of x to go up by 1, then we add 2 thirds to y every time x goes up by 1. Now this perspective shift between the ratio of the changes and the change in y when the change in x is 1 is going to end up being really, really useful to us.